Looks like we're dealing with a, an older spill here. And I want to see if I can show you one of the worst screws. Let's see. I don't know how well this is going to come across on camera, but let's say if you look at this guy. Oh, I sight you're so blurry. Yeah, you can't really see it. But basically, this is a black screw, and it's covered with white corrosion. And that's unusual. What you will see sometimes is you'll see um, some blue wrapped around the screw. That is like Teflon. Think of it, um, you know how plumbers are going to use a little bit of that white Teflon tape when they're screwing things um, into like bathroom fixtures. Well, to keep the screws in, you can use, it's, it's a different color that Apple uses, but it's the same idea. It's basically a Teflon that just keeps it in. So now that I have the screws removed from the top case, I'm going to go ahead and remove it. For this, the only tool I need is my black stick. Um, I take it and I lift it up on the left hand edge here. That edge always comes up pretty easily. Things to note, the rest of the top case is held on with clips. They make a pretty loud noise, so that's normal. There are, um, there's a clip here, there are some clips here, and there's a row of clips there. So you're going to hear what that sounds like in just a moment. So I'm going to start over on my left edge here, and I'm going to lift up the top case. I'm sorry, I lied. There are no clips right there. The clips are all right here. So I lifted up the, t the left side, now I take my black stick and I put it underneath the front. The clips undid very easily, and I went around the optical drive and they also undid very easily. You should never have to use a lot of force to remove a top case. If you're using a lot of force, I bet you still have a screw screwed in somewhere. So I've got the top case off, and my hand is getting covered in liquid corrosion, so let's see if you can see this stuff. This discoloration down here, that should not be there. That is liquid damage, and it is pretty extensive. And that area um, here, this is where the hard drive was. So we already knew that there was liquid in here. And if you want to see the inside of the hard drive bay, you can see it right there. And this grayish color, the white and gray that you see there, that's all liquid corrosion. So. This poor machine has definitely seen better days. So other things that we're going to look for in here, common areas where a MacBook tends to have liquid are the keyboard, naturally. And the keyboard we know has liquid damage because of all of the corrosion that we saw around the top case and the fact that a lot of the keys are physically sticky. That's a very good sign. And the trackpad is physically sticky. So the other area that I always check is going to be um, along the left side here. Reason being, you've got open ports there. And if there are open ports, liquid does tend to come in through them. So just reloading my Twitter feed. Again, feel free to tweet. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the bracket over here. Actually, I'm going to just remove some of the screws that hold the bracket in. And so this is a, a second gen MacBook. I don't need to remove the whole bracket to do what I'm looking to do, which is check the sleep switch indicator. So over here on your MacBook, there is this little guy which is called a sleep switch. Let me see if I can bring that up so you can see it a little clearer. It's this little guy that's kind of chilling up here. So this has two purposes. It has the sleep switch on it, which basically means there's a magnet that's right up here in the display. And when you close the display, it notifies the sleep switch that's right here. And that is what puts your computer to sleep when you shut the lid. If you have a MacBook that has been liquid damaged and it either isn't going to sleep when you shut the lid or it's constantly going to sleep even with the lid open, there's a good chance that there was damage done to the sleep switch. The other thing that it does is it drives power to the battery. So it's literally taking the power from the logic board and supplying it to your battery, which means if you've had liquid spilled on the MacBook and your battery's not charging anymore, well, there's probably damage to the sleep switch. Uh, normally what we would find when I remove this sleep switch is I would see some gray, uh, white, or green corrosion. When copper builds liquid corrosion, it does turn green. So that's one of the colors we tend to see a lot. Uh, in this case, though, of all the places on this machine that was hit with liquid, it didn't hit the sleep switch. So that's great. 
Now, one of the things that I get asked a lot is, well, can I just replace the sleep switch? The problem is that all the gold connectors at the bottom of that switch are going into the logic board. And nine times out of ten, if the sleep switch was damaged, then the logic board needs to be replaced as well. And that's a very expensive repair. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bracket back on to hold this left I.O. brace in place. And I'm just going to give the machine another once over here. So I'm just looking to see if there are any other components that are liquid damaged without going so far as to actually remove the logic board from the machine. Um, so it's only 2.15. We've got time. So maybe I will go ahead and remove the logic board. And again, for you five viewers out there, thank you for bearing with me. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And by the way, um, we are getting ready to open up a new store in Manchester, New Hampshire. And we are hiring. In fact, we are hiring for all of our locations. So if you are interested, please, please send your resume to jobs at smalldog.com. And feel free to check our website for information about the job openings. So what I like to do, because I've done a, a quite, quite a bit of these MacBooks, <laughs> is one of the first things that I do is I just remove a lot of the screws in order. Because for me and my workflow, I know where I'm going, and I'm, I just want to get everything out of the way. So I start by removing the screws on the fan. And then I go and I remove the screws from the heat sink. And actually, do, 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 do I want to do that on this? Yeah, sure, sure. We'll do the whole shebang. It'll be fun. So there are four equally sized screws that hold on the heat sink. For the fan screws that I just took out, one is longer than the other. This might seem like common sense, but you do always want to be sure that you're putting back screws in the proper holes, in the proper place. If you put a long screw in a hole for a short screw, it's not going to have the best results. So now I'm removing the screws from the airport card. The one on the right hand side is a grounding screw. It's longer and thicker. The one on the left side is a standard, I believe they call it a 3x3. Three three. I'm removing the screw from the MagSafe board, and I'm removing the longer screw from the speaker. And if you're wondering where I'm putting all these screws, I'm using a screw cup right now. It keeps things organized. So now that I've got all the screws removed, I can start just going ahead and ripping out components. I use that word ripping lightly. So what I removed before that you didn't see, I removed the LVDS cable that powers the display. I removed the optical drive cable. That's this thick orange one that powers your optical drive, your disk drive. I'm removing the SATA cable. That's what connects the hard drive to the logic board. I'm going to go ahead and remove the speaker cable that powers the speakers on the right-hand side of the machine. We remove the mic cable here, and that is held in place on this model um, with a little clip that's on the logic board, so it's important to not break that clip when you're going in. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the Bluetooth connector to the logic board over there. So once I have all my cables out of the way on the right-hand side, I do like to tape those down. It um, helps keep everything organized and makes sure that I don't get cables stuck under the logic board when I reseat it. So next I'm going to go for my fan, disconnect the one fan cable to the logic board, disconnect the two heat sink temperature sensors from the logic board, and that module is just going to come out as an all-in-one. I'm going to actually leave the piece of cap tape that's holding them to the optical drive right now, because I can just kind of flip that over. Now on the back of the heat sink, there is thermal grease, and that's also on the chips on the logic board. It's really important anytime you do a repair on a machine that has thermal grease that you remove it and then replace it when you're putting the machine back together. Um, the reason being is it's, it, it loses its bond when you disconnect it and it really needs that bond in order to dissipate heat properly so that your machine doesn't overheat and you don't end up losing a processor, or losing a video card, or any other component.